It's shaping up to be one of the most remarkable conclusions to the Japanese football season that we've ever seen, and that is saying something. Underway here at the NHK Spring Mutazawa Football Stadium as the Yokohama F Marinos host Hokkaido Contadore Sapporo on match day number 31. Early foul against Lucas Fernandez. Well, FC Tokyo still just about have the lead in J1, and they are currently away to Jubilo Iwata. But they've only taken 11 out of the last 24 points. The Malinos, in contrast, have taken 19 out of 24 points, and they sit just a place behind in second. 61 points to FC Tokyo, 62 with four fixtures, including this one, to go. As for Consadole, you just never know, really, do you, what sort of uh, team you're going to get or what performance, and they're in trouble here. That's going to be a gift right at the start of the game. Possessing Gu Sung Yun, hugely embarrassing for the away goalkeeper and for the home team, just the start they needed. It is the Maninos 1, the Contadole 0. And look away, Contadole fans, because this one is a shocker. And if ever, if ever a moment was handed to a team when they are chasing down the leaders, this was it. The easiest goal that they will probably score all season. And one of the most important goals they'll score all season. The home fans cannot believe it. Well, now the pressure is put on the leaders, FC Tokyo, because word will spread pretty quickly that the Marinos are leading. Antlers and uh, Frontale also playing at the same time in a battle of third and fourth place. Both of those teams still technically in contention for the title. Goodness, the drama here. Marco Junior gets the ball and keeps possession for the Marinos. It's out of play. Well, I was saying you never know what team you're going to get with Consadoli, and that was the proof of it. They could win 8-0, they could lose 5-0, and every possibility in between as well. Ken Matsubara. Super ball to Terahito Nakagawa, who's well ahead of Daiki Suga. Nakagawa with pace. Dispossessed in the end, or not dispossessed. Nakagawa crossing, it's another! And the Marinos lead by two goals to nil inside of five minutes. Even in their wildest dreams, they could not have hoped for this. Nakagawa with a super sprint, but once again, Contadole just do not get the ball away. Two players getting in a right old mess. And it's well finished once again by Eric, getting his second of the game, his fifth of the season. The impact that this man has had since he joined on loan in July from Palmeiras. Okumori plays the ball to Suzuki, uh, to Bothroyd even. Well, but he can't even believe it. Okay, Bothroyd. Player who scored eight goals this season. But 
to batter. Daniki Suga with the restart as Bothroyd is shepherded out of play by Thiago Martins. now in full control of this game it unquestionably adds to the pressure that has been put on FC Tokyo and they are struggling to handle said pressure at the moment they've led for so much of the season but it's all just starting to drift away Possession has uh, been given away by Marco Junior, and it is a chance for Consadole with Daiki Suga. Just about managed to keep the ball through to Suzuki, almost. Chanatip nearly fed him. Lucas Fernandez. Great play from Lucas Fernandez. Two players in there. Thiago Martins had to get the header because both Suzuki and Bothroyd were close to that ball. And a much more positive spell from Consadole after two very poor moments at the back. Ito Fukumori who gave the Malinos such problems in the reverse fixture back in April, when Contadole won 3-0 at home. Kumori's corner, Bothroyd saved and in! Musashi Suzuki with a rebound. And suddenly, it does not seem like a formality anymore. It's a good stop from Park il -Gyu. Powerful header from Bothroyd, but Suzuki was well positioned to poach the rebound. It's a powerful leap from Bothroyd. And the 11th goal of the season for that man there, Musashi Suzuki. Thiago Martins. Well, what a start to this game. <laughs> Ten minutes and three goals. Lusan Yun this time just whacks it away. It's an incredible start to the game in April between these two teams with the home side there also taking a very heavy early lead. Suddenly, the uh, small but compact crowd here in the NHK Spring Mitsuzawa Football Stadium are a little bit more unsettled. Yeah. Go. Just to get this one away again after being dispossessed. A matter of seconds on the clock. Arkil Gyu, goalkeeper who does like to take a fair few touches in his penalty area. Zukai moves the ball on. Looking for Daiki Suga, challenging ball in the sun there for Ken Matsubara.
Well, let's just take a moment if the game will allow us. So, end to end, is it that uh, it's hard to have time to uh, look at the calculations? But so a foul is uh, rather clearly made there by uh, Fukai. Let's take a moment just to think about the permutations and what might happen. So Tanaka picks himself up off the ground. Really too much doubt, that was a fair old body check. Now, should FC Tokyo fail to beat Jubilo, their game is currently scoreless, then it means that the Marinos will go top of the table. and Frontale, they're on 59 and 57 points respectively. Best thing for Tokyo and the Malinos is for those two sides to draw. Win for the Antlers and they're right in the mix as well. Matsubara, he's brought down, isn't he, by uh, Suga. Just really enticed Suga to make that challenge as he flew past him. Two Brazilian players, Marcos Junior and Mateus, sizing this up. What a pleasant beginning to the game for him. Very pleasant for them. Lovely atmosphere in this temporary home for the Marinos. Whilst the Nissan Stadium is being used for the Rugby World Cup. It's got a great footballing history to it. Which we'll talk about later on in the game. But for now, to the present and a good opportunity. Mateus with a strike and about a comfortable save for Gu. He ended up palming it away, fisting it away. Eric. Oh, what a flick that was to Marcos Junior. Such vision. Just cannot overstate the impact that Eric has had. He's brought a, a real threat down the wing as there's a threat in the air here. As, uh, Suzuki has got the ball back inexplicably. Hart looks around at his defenders. Says, why did I have to make the save here? First touch from Bothroyd. Suzuki getting ahead, really, of two, possibly three Malinos players, and Bark quite rightly turned around to say, what on earth happened there? Kida plays it back to his goalkeeper. A little too delicate with his clearance. Too delicate there as well. Marcos Junior, and right out there is Gu Sun Yun. Well, that was a brave and alert bit of goalkeeping. Marcos Junior has taken a nasty impact. So the ball hit him on the arm and then his arm went up and hit him in the face. So one of those chain reaction kind of things that he was having a bit of a chuckle about. Suki Fukai wears eight for the visitors. Fukumori, useful touch. Suga. Space for Bothroyd. He's just off. Very different sort of 
builds that uh, these two teams have to their attackers. Really, Malinos focusing so much down the wing, the pace of Nakagawa, the pace of Eric. Contrast, Contadole playing balls through the center for Bothroyd, either in the air for him to flick on for Suzuki and vice versa. It's a very controlled challenge from Tiraton Bunmata. He's proven himself highly useful in possession. Tsubara giving it away. Just couldn't quite control it, Daiki Suga. Otaru in Hokkaido, a beautiful coastal city. Very popular tourist destination. Kagawa against Suga. This is looking a, a very dangerous place for the Marinos. Right flank is all Nakagawa's at the moment. Action-packed beginning to this vital game as we move into uh, what is looking like a November to remember in the J-League. Monkey had it down. to uh, just about seize possession with Chana Tip. He's got it back, the Thai international. Thai international player on both teams today. This is a great ball over the top. Goalkeeper has come and he's really played that well. Excellent keeping from Park il -Gyu. So there was a, a collision after this was played. Let's have another look. Lucas Fernandez, yeah, he does get uh, contact from the kicking right foot of Park. And it's a nasty one as well. I think it's uh, an unintentional consequence. But he really did get a boot in the midsection, Lucas Fernandez. Goalkeepers very busy. You won't want to see this again. And they won't want to see this again. Suga playing the ball off Fukai. It's a lifeline provided by the combination of Bothroyd and Suzuki for Hokkaido Contador Sapporo. While the other key games are scoreless. Nakagawa. 
looks so dangerous every time he comes towards the area. They're appealing for a penalty kick, but there was no way that was an intentional handball from Fukai. Now, let us just take a moment to remember that the Marinos host FC Tokyo on the final day of the season. From FC Tokyo's perspective, they will just desperately want to wrap up the title before that fixture. Should it come down to goal difference, at the moment that marginally favours the Marinos. to say that that should be a penalty kick for Kai. has got his arms pretty well by his side. Lucas Fernandez seems to have recovered. He keeps possession here. It's uh, Arano. Trying to get away from Bun Mutan, and he does, but doesn't get away from Marcos Junior. Fukumori. Loose bit of play. And De Gea goes with uh, real pace. The counter attack, Nakagawa, still Nakagawa! They can't get near him! No one can get near him! Unbelievable goal! Terahito Nakagawa. His name means the man who shines. And he is sparkling now. This is perhaps a defining moment in the season of the Marinos. Nakagawa. Looking like a man winning a 200 metres race. Everyone else just lining up behind him. They could not get near him, and this is a virtuoso display from Terahito Nakagawa. It is one of the goals of the season from the Marinos. Nakagawa's 12th goal in J1, and it gives a two-goal lead once more to the home side. Nakagawa has it back. As if he wasn't dangerous enough. They're giving possession back so easily. It's a super idea to play that through to Bothroyd, though. Fernandez, controlled by Suzuki, who takes a bit of a stumble. What a fascinating football match. What a contribution he has made. Kagawa. Eric. So many red shirts everywhere, and they are just struggling to get near the ball. The Marinos just keeping alive the title race until the final game of the season is all that matters. Important cut out by Yosuke Shindo, who's been such a great player for Konsole, but even he gives the ball away, albeit with a foul committed. Specs that, from the Marinos's perspective, they won't care if they're 
two points behind FC Tokyo going into that last day. As long as they're mathematically in with the chance, hosting them at home, they'll be up for that. on and uh, just getting in there and winning the foul is that man Nakagawa really having the season of his life at the moment and let's have another look back at this extraordinary goal and a lot of credit really needs to be paid to Mateus as uh, Bothroyd at the other end is just as possessed by Thiago Martins to a roar from the home fans Meanwhile, nothing doing in the FC Tokyo and uh, Jubilo game. Atlas and Frontale. Mateus to Nakagawa. What an important touch by Daiki Suga. Just have such width, the Marinos. Suga read that ball well move from wing to wing with such efficiency. And Postacoglu has really created a stylish footballing side. Marcos Junior straight to the goalkeeper, who almost lost it. Sin, the player of the season for Constole last year, hasn't uh, perhaps had as strong a season by his uh, incredibly high standards from last year, but he's nonetheless been one of the most key providers for them. International teammate Bungmantan uh, is possessed, but. Uh, no long-term threat. Ken Matsubara. Very busy is Daiki Suga trying to cope with Nakagawa as his team tries to cope with this uh, overall incredibly strong attacking threat that the Marinos possess. They have so many options in terms of dangerous players to bring on as well that Contadole don't too. Here's Nakagawa once more. Because just when the legs start to get tired for the visitors, then Marinos have players like Keita Endo to bring on who will just stretch the game. Sadole have got Anderson Lopez on the bench. This goes out 
to Suga. So that's a good bit of recovery play. Tracking back Nakagawa. Nakanaka has been on the pitch for every minute of the season so far. Season that is seeing the Marinos getting back up towards their former glories. Three times the Japanese champions. Nothing for getting on for 15 years now. Marco Junior. Mateus does beautifully. Might go it alone here, Mateus. Matsubara, good idea. And we've got a lovely clean connection on the ball. Fortunate really for Gu that was played straight at him because the pace of that might have made it very hard. Had it been just a couple of feet to the side. Marcos Junior as they press to regain possession so well. Matsubara again quite central and quite far forwards. that very effectively Ken Matsubara from the right hand side drift in from time to time there's the danger he's got to really track back here he goes down heavily under the challenge from Chanatip Songkarsin three Luigi Sato Conversation rather than anything else. First ever player from Southeast Asia, Chana Tip, to make the J League team of the season. Suzuki, who puts it back towards Bothroyd. Important header from Thiago Martins. Just went to sleep a little bit, some of the Marinos defenders there. Bukai goes to Suga. I don't know. Thiago Martins just shanks it up into the air. comes the counter-attack with Mateus and Eric looking to combine down the left. Marcos Junior towards Nakagawa and yet again it's Suga with that uh, vital touch. Suzuki to Bothroyd, he's off. Just by a fraction, Jay Bothroyd, and the flag is up. Some very relieved Marinos fans there. Oh, is he off? He certainly doesn't think so. It was a very close one. May not have been the correct decision. Yakida restart the game. those players has been virtually ever present for Marinos in J1. Chanatip back up again. We're going to restart the game quickly, Park Hill Gyu. I'm sure that really the team had got into an effective shape. Sashi Suzuki, score of the only Constable goal. It's 
good control. Gower. Well, he hasn't had much chance yet, Akito Fukumori, to trouble the Marinos with his left foot in the way that he did in the reverse fixture in April. He was a horrible player for them to face on that game, not just because of his goal. It's a beautifully taken free kick. But uh, his overall distribution was quite sensational. Mihailo Petrovic's team have not had much opportunity to do that in this game. So much pressing from his side. Kumori. It's going to be a tricky one there for the defence. Did away nicely. Mateus. Trained on loan from Krampus through the season. Playing in his eighth game for the home side. I think it is clear to all and sundry that Ange Postacoglu, who puts a lot into his scouting teams, works very closely with them. There's a lot of uh, data analysis that they do at the Marinos. He's made some very good signings. Really have complemented the team. It's easy to look at every single player that he's brought in and concretely assess the impact they've had. Sometimes you get to this stage of a football season and players are brought in in what can sometimes feel like a little bit of a haphazard fashion by teams. Searching, hoping for an impact as they re-sign maybe a former player or go for somebody who doesn't have necessarily a long-term consistent track record but can be an impact player. For Postacoglu, he really has brought players in strategically. Junior, one of those players who's been here for the whole season now. More than anything else, the Marinos have demonstrated that they are ready to handle this occasion and up for a fight that is looking like it's going to go the distance. Could go top today. It's through to Nakagawa. Right in the middle of two defenders. Mateus is an option. If Eric can play it to him, here is Mateus, and he must score. Oh, goodness. That's an extraordinary miss from Mateus. He had the freedom of Yokohama, and he played it into the side netting. And he has scored many a much harder goal than that in his career. Could it be that the Marinos look back on that moment with a sense of what might have been come the conclusion of this season? Still have a two-goal cushion, though, as we get close to half-time. Bothroyd to give chase, and yet again, he's ahead of the line. As he's onside, it is. Teos. Make amends here. 
Mateus making life very hard for Shindo. Oh, that was nearly an incredible goal. Eric, can they put it away? And yet again, is leathered into the side netting. So many chances for the Marinos to go 4-1 up. Firstly, this hit from Mateus. This a much harder chance than the previous one. And much closer to scoring. Marcos Junior is brought down and the danger persists. They've had some glorious chances. A little clip from Suga. Eric doing what his uh, fellow countrymen had done just a matter of moments before and putting the ball into the side netting, albeit that a slightly trickier chance. He's been busy today. It's likely to continue to be busy. Mateus. Wanting to play it short. Back to Chago Martins, who's another of the uh, Palmeiras loan signings. It has been a very strong link between Japan and Brazil in football. There is uh, a strong link between the countries themselves overall for a great many years. In the early 1900s, that so many Japanese emigrated to Brazil. Large Brazilian and Japanese Brazilian communities throughout the country, especially in the big port cities of Yokohama. Probably the trailblazer. So Eric has possession. Would be Zico. Moved over to Japan for the start of the J-League. Team, the uh, Antlers are finishing the season strongly. Antlers have taken 18 out of their last 24 points and are definitely in the title picture. Marinos are the form team at the moment of the top clubs. More worryingly, FC Tokyo, they're the outer form team. Nakagawa is offside. And Tanaka. Happy Akida spent his uh, whole career at this club. Great honour of wearing the armband. It's been a very well-received decision to give the armband to Kida. A player who lives and breathes the club and the city. Given away to Chanatip. Cut out well by Thiago Martins. Just to drop back rather than keep going forwards as Mateus, who looks so dangerous every time he has the ball, is brought down. And a yellow card is administered to uh, Lucas Fernandez.
himself is on loan at Contadole. Fluminense. But again, he prepares himself to be tested. cross from this position. Of course, Junior it is. He does cross it and Jay Bothroyd gets a very important touch. On this occasion, it's him denying Thiago Martins. Brazilian centre-back is still in the area. Wonderful pace from Mateus and Daiki Suga. Careful to stay on his feet and avoid fouling. Quickly taken restarts from Mateus. Bunmatan, useful left foot that he has, headed away by Fukai. Good defending by Contadore. Definitely pushing for the killer goal right before the conclusion of the first half. And that is the end of an action-packed first half here in Yokohama. The moment of the half being his goal, unquestionably. But it has been a splendid team effort from Ange Postacoglu's side. They went 2-0 up before Musashi Suzuki got the visitors back into contention and then it was time for the moment of magic from Terahito Nakagawa. It means that at the break it is Yokohama F Marinos 3, Hokkaido Contadole Sapporo 1. So we are underway in the second half here at the NHK Spring Mitsuzawa Football Stadium on this match day number 31 out of 34 matches in the J1 season of 2019 and it is proving to be a real sprint finish. Anderson Lopez is on for Jay Bothroyd at half time. Is that the only change that's been made by either team? Ahead of the offside Suzuki. Scored in the eighth minute. Not an entirely unexpected decision to bring him on. Anderson Lopez can have an enormous impact. He's got four goals in the game against the S Pulse at the start of the season to that with five more since then. He's a very strong player and a very technical player. He offers just a touch more in terms of pace. It's a long trip. Hokkaido down to Yokohama. J League's northernmost team. Kito Fukumori. It's a good delivery, it's a great delivery, and what a save! And again, what a double save from Park Ilgyu. Ma 
massive bit of goalkeeping from the 29-year-old Fukumori. The header initially from Ryotsuke Shindo, who scored quite a few goals from those kind of positions this season, but then blocking from Suzuki. Great bit of goalkeeping. There it goes, Hatanaka with Anderson Lopez, and Mateus hooks it away. Chanatip. And then possession given away by Kim Minte. Well, you look back at attacking moments very often as the things that win trophies, but if they do launch a successful title bid, that double save there from Park il -Gyu. Preserving the two-goal advantage could be identified as a big, big point of no return. Yusuke Shindo was so close to getting his fifth goal. Must have felt as Shindo let for that ball. It was going to be back to a one-goal game. Marco Junior should be an easy one for Gu. Although the sun is uh, very tricky at the moment. Oh, they've won this back. Marinos Nakagawa. Nervous defending from Contadole as eventually Fukumori plays it out, but only as far as Thiago Martins. Kida always looks like he's going to spring around behind the fullbacks. Does Nakagawa. Suga on the diagonal looking for Anderson Lopez. What a header that is. Hatanaka. what happens to the Yokohama F Marinos this season in terms of their title bid as this is a Super Bowl from Anderson Lopez to Suga and a great challenge by the number 27 Ken Matsubara to claim off the red shirt last by the looks of things Fit of that decision. Well, that exemplifies the point I was <laughs> about to make. Whatever happens to the Marinos this season, whether they launch a title challenge successfully, well, they have launched a challenge, but whether they are successful, whether they finish first, second, third, fourth, and everything is really still possible. They've done it the right way, haven't they? They've done it by being attacking, enthralling. As is his side, let's not forget, this is a team that won 8-0 away to the S-Pulse earlier this season. Chanatip. Fukumori, almost to Lucas Fernandez. Brings it under control well and doesn't quite receive it back in the end from uh, Matsubara, but it's still a Marinos ball.
now. We're just making life horrible for Suga yet again. Poor Daiki Suga's had a wretched day trying to deal with Nakagawa. Some positive impact since coming on, Anderson Lopez. This is a great play for Morgi Hara. in Takuma Arano. In the end, that was uh, much more dramatic than it looked like it was going to be. This could be even more dramatic. Eric on to Marcos Junior. He's offside. Side straight away at the other end too. Suga, who is doing his utmost to try to get forwards, despite obviously his attentions being dominated at the defensive end by Nakagawa. Fernandez. Grappling with Tiraton Bumatanu, who was grappling with a handful of uh, Lucas Fernandez's shirt. Lucas Fernandez plays it to Anderson Lopez, and now Chana Tip to shoot. Mateus arrives unexpectedly. Oh, what happened there to the goalkeeper? Cleared by Ryosuke Shindo off the line as uh, Gu Sung Yun seemed to be functioning in slow motion. Mateus' cross goes behind and a let off there, courtesy of Shindo's quick work. A great run from Mateus. Doesn't get the cleanest of connections, and Gu is entirely deceived by the ball. That would have been another really uh, embarrassing moment in his day. Helped out by Shindo. Marcos Junior has it. Chance to shoot instead to cross over the top of Eric. Mateus crosses himself. Marcos Junior. Someone's got to hit it. It's Ogihara. Mateus, they're lining up, and they cannot put it in, and yet again, Ryosuke Shindo with the block. In a remarkable season, this somehow stands alone as a remarkable match. relatively new to watching the J League. This is why everyone loves it. It is such entertaining football. Anderson Lopez, a great burst away from Hatanaka. Good coverage from Thiago Martins, who's been calm at the back.
Excellent sprint across from Thiago Martins. 24 year old. He has won a title, Thiago Martins, won the top flight with Palmeiras in 2016 in the Campeonato Brasileiro. Looking for Eric. Spell of possession for the Marinos. Kagawa forced all the way back, but uh, the space has still opened up. Hida and uh, Matsubara will be Matsubara. Chago Martins. Might fancy a go here. Set off for the simple ball to Mateus. Covered by the visiting side. Not for long. As ever, tracking back Chago Martins involved in recapturing possession. Important touch from Lucas Fernandez. But uh, Marcos Junior with a chance to play it through to Eric. Great block from Fukumori. Blocked again. And blocked again. Superb defending from Hokkaido Contador Sapporo. Brave defending. As Marinos once more are unable to put the ball in from close range. Change to be made. As Kim Min Tae is replaced by Hiroki Miyazawa. Hasn't come off the bench on many occasions this season, generally a starter and generally wearing the armband. Now, meanwhile, FC Tokyo lead at Jubilo by a goal to nil. Come back to that in a moment. Played a little ahead of Suga. Chanatip. It's not over, is it, this game, by any stretch of the imagination? It's entirely conceivable that Contadole could get right back in it. It's entirely conceivable that the Marinos could score several more. especially when he comes on. Lucas Fernandez is dispossessed. Mateus has it. First activity for Miyazawa. And then hit over by Chanatip. Substitution. Is pace for pace. Terahito Nakagawa having scored one of the goals of the season. He is to be replaced by Keita Endo. The number 11 shirts held up for the hugely popular 21 year old player Keita Endo. Yokohama came through the youth team. He has been a, a significant impact player, Keita Endo, this season. And if 
you've never seen Keita Endo play before, you will doubtless discover why. And the counter-attack is where he's at his absolute best. And can play on either flank as well, effectively. Here is the uh, first opportunity for him to get involved. Suzuki. Diego Oliveira, scorer for FC Tokyo. Very different sort of game going on there. Much tighter affair than this one. Lucas Fernandez. So if everything stays the same, as uh, this could be a very tough one, but it's offside. He's under real pressure there, the goalkeeper. So yes, if everything stays the same, it'll still be a one-point gap with FC Tokyo ahead of the Marinos. Games still to play after this one is done. With that final one being the Marinos at home to FC Tokyo. There was always going to be a tall order for Consadole to match last season's fourth place finish. They are Comfortably a mid-table side at the moment. Upper mid-table. This is uh, not a bad ball, actually, to Chanatip, but it's cut out well by Matsubara, at least half cut out. Mateus. Uh, the final touch on that. Kumori to deliver. Get it back towards Fukai and going for the spectacular was Anderson Lopez. Stabbed clear. Kept in by Marcos Junior. Now here's the counter attacking opportunity, or well, would have been, had Suga not committed the foul. Has to be a yellow card, really, for Daiki Suga. Really, any uh, great complaint he can have to make about that? Tactical decision, really, to stop the counter attack. Bunmatan. It's a difficult one that Suga had to make a call to play with Endo player arriving. Well, he's been very useful, Budmatan. Player on loan from Wang Tong United in the Thai top flight. Shunga Martins will come forward. trying to find some space. Bumatan. 
important interception by Takuma Arano. Endo, he's done really nicely. Marcos Junior wants the ball. And he does get the ball and he's brought down. A penalty kick. So often it is Nakagawa who's brought down. But this time it is Marcos Junior and it will likely be him to take it. Endo with the pass. And a little pullback by Akito Fukumori. This will be the uh, telling angle. There's no doubt that he pulls the arm of Marco Junior. It has to be a penalty kick. He simply can't do that. He can put his hands up all he likes. That's what he was doing with his hands before, that was the issue. Marco Junior, who's been so accurate from the spot this season. He has a chance to possibly make this safe. Throughout this late bid for the title, the Marinos have not faltered. And they do not falter now. Marcos Junior, with his 15th goal of the season, makes it 4-1. And quite possibly makes safe the victory. Yokohama is believing that this could possibly be their year. It's another very well-placed penalty by Marcos Junior. Gu Sung Yun anticipated it, but it was just too well-placed. Fernandez to Anderson Lopez. Oh, he's off the bar. Very unexpected chance for Anderson Lopez. Still nervous moments at the back. Anderson Lopez that looked as though. That was going nowhere and it just suddenly dropped. Got a light but not very clean touch on the ball. I don't think any of the Marinos players actually expected that to come rebounding back into play. by Ogihara to Mateus, unguarded net, and he puts it wide. Yet again, Mateus sees a shot go agonisingly past the post. Goalkeeper was completely committed and well beaten. And that's total relief for Daiki Suga seeing that one go past the post. Just look at the reaction of the Marinos fans behind the goal. Them thought that was heading in. Yakida. Gu still happy to take his time with the ball. Remarkable considering what's happened throughout this game. Channel tip and coming across again Matsubara who's had a really good game. Lucas 
Fernandez should be Bun Matanz. Leaves it for the goalkeeper. given away it's Miyazawa the substitute who has the ball over the top looking for Arano this is surely going to go in it is Musashi Suzuki makes it 4-2 something to make the home fans a little concerned stroked in comfortably by Musashi Suzuki it's a great touch from Takuma Adano. He really does control that ball well. It's a nice goal. Suzuki's 12th of the season. Only the second time that he's scored two in a game. And on the second match day against the Red Diamonds. Shihiro Nakano wearing number 23 has come on to replace Chanatip Songkrasin. That is all of the changes used by Contadole. And he'll still have two left. Well, it has quietened things down just a touch in the NHK Spring Mitsuzawa Football Stadium. Stolen there by Keita Endo. Nizawa makes the run. Anderson Lopez trying to flick it to him. That's about that. Fernandez has space. Tried to play it to Anderson Lopez with uh, Masashi Suzuki fuming at Lucas Fernandez for not playing the ball to him. He's now unhappy but penalised for the foul on Marcos Junior. made this temporary space as Marco Junior is in uh, some real discomfort made this temporary space really uh, work as a home for them well, this is definitely a concern Junior, but he's not looking quite right. Just wonder if they might make the decision to withdraw him from the game. Knowing that there's so much still to come and knowing that they are relatively safe in terms of this game.
Lucas Fernandez. Substitute Yoshihiro Nakano has possession. It's a shooting chance for Anderson Lopez. Been very involved since coming on. Really been up for this game. Goes to uh, Miyazawa. A chance to see Lucas Fernandez use this ball wisely, looking for Suzuki again. to recover possession, Musashi Suzuki. Trying to bend it inside of Park Hill Q's post. Well, any game that involves Hokkaido Consadole Sapporo is an entertaining game. And he's, uh, and a touch on the unpredictable side as well. Played their part in a hugely engrossing fixture here at the conclusion of the Japanese football season. It's going to be a long conclusion. It's going to be an epilogue or two written. as though we're going down to the last few fixtures, maybe even the very last one. Chinosuke Hatanaka, Tiraton Bungmatan. Mateus, Marco Junior tries to play it back onto Mateus. does well to recover possession for Consadole. Sashi Suzuki to Anderson Lopez. And it's really well defended by Thiago Martins. Then played a little bit of a short ball back to Park. once again with space to come forward on the wing. Yeah. Was preparing to make a change by the looks of things, Yuki Otsu, which is a pretty standard substitution as uh, Marcos Junior cross stroke shot, Endo nowhere near it. Does look as though he's uh, still feeling a little bit bruised. Marco Junior, it might well be that it's him they take off. It wouldn't be a great surprise. This is an unexpected attacking opportunity. Three on three. Four now if you count Lucas Fernandez, who's come into play, and he has got the ball. Lucas Fernandez in the end just couldn't use that. His stand is not a strong delivery because he's been so reliable throughout the season from the right wing for Hokkaido Consadole Sapporo. Marcos Junior. And here is a great chance if the flag stays down, it has stayed down. Endo played it ahead of Eric. Eric still has it, goes up and over. I think they expected play to stop there and it did not.
Eric acknowledges the effort made by Keita Endo. Meanwhile, Marcos Junior is being substituted. Yuki Otsu coming on. Had a huge impact today. Marcos Junior scoring a really important penalty kick. Also does look as though he's in a little bit of pain too. That will be of obvious concern to Ange Postacoglu and his medical staff. Certainly a wise decision to take him off. This game now, you'd have to say, looking one. Tricky one for Park, couldn't control it, it was a bit heavy from Ogihara. But he has done some important work in this game, Park Il Q, particularly the double save from Shindo and Suzuki. Mori with the corner kick. Mateus touches the ball on to Endo. Lucas Fernandez so dispossessed again by Endo, but he's lost out. Suzuki, goalkeeper's there. Needed to get across and cover Daiki Suga. Hiro Nakano nearly gets it back from Suzuki. Now goes out to Lucas Fernandez, crosses the ball towards the substitute. Yet to score this season, Nakano signed from Vigalta Sendai at the start of the season. Brilliant noise from the visiting fans. The loudest noise is going to come from the home supporters when the whistle blows be of immense relief because this is a game that really can't end quickly enough now for Ange Postacoglu. Eric to try to make it safe. Again, an enormous impact that Eric has had. Two goals in the first five minutes. From then on, it has never seemed anything other than likely that the Marinos would win the game. It's what you need in a game of such consequence is a nice, quick, early goal. Well, he got two of them. It is uh, an incredibly tight game at uh, Jubilo. It's Thiago Martins finds himself unexpectedly far forward. Yuki Otsu helps him wrestle the ball back. Matsubara overlaps. Brilliant play from Matsubara! <laughs> Acknowledged by Mateus. What a great game. Again, Matsubara has had.
Fernandez is offside. Well, they will be desperately hoping all is OK for Marcos Junior. Watching on his work done, Torohito Nakagawa. Another splendid team effort from this Marinos side that is just full of character and characters. See Tokyo managed to hang on and get the win. Tatanaka heads away. Still be in the lead. Just get the sense that somehow they are the more vulnerable side. Tokyo need the Marinos to slip up somewhere so that that final game of the season does not become an absolute cauldron totally favouring the Marinos Endo just to use up some seconds maybe do even more than that Eric he's gonna have a go and it's just not quite reached they're trying to suck that ball in, the home fans. Everyone inhaling as that crept its way towards the goal line. Great play from Yuki Otsu. He's not yet fouled uh, Takuma Arano either. Ogihara. The end crossing the ball for Endo. Kida's an option. Endo goes on his own. Saku Yukida was saying, Come on, make the right decision. There was space to pass that to me. And he was right. He looks very, very calm for a man whose side is the one creating all the drama at the close of the season in J1. Two out of 27 points taken by the Marinos at the end of this game. That is a fantastic last nine fixtures. Contrast, it looks as though it's going to be if things stay the same. 14 out of 27 for FC Tokyo. do not lie, the Madinos are the form team. went for goal, not anything like as threatening as the last time he did that to the Marinos earlier in the season on a free kick. Endo very useful in just bringing the ball forwards, clearing the lines through his pace. A man who's scored five goals so far this season, two massive ones against Grampus, a huge one against Gamba. about that. Keita Endo. Suga does very well, actually. 
Almost there. They've almost done it. Still, the Maninos chase every single ball down. Mateus. Miyazawa fighting hard to recapture the ball. It's now with Yuki Otsu. Desperate for the whistle to go. Ogihara. In the closing seconds of the match. All they've got to do really is get this one away. It's going to be the job done. Fernandez, the touch is away. Referee's just waiting for the attack to finish by the looks of things as Suzuki goes down in the box. And listen to that roar. They have somehow managed to do it. The Yokohama F. Marinos continue their extraordinary conclusion to this season with a win against Hokkaido Consadole Sapporo. And they remain as things stand, just a point away from the leaders FC Tokyo, and they will host FC Tokyo on the final day of the season. All that drama still to come. Tell, tell him that his words to me before the game are much more important to me than the victory. That's only one more. Oh, and what a lovely finish there. What a lovely final sentiment. Ange Postacoglu's team defeat Mihailo Petrovic's by four goals to two.